Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, today I thought we'd take a look at the serial port. Um, we looked at it before, but we're going to have to go a step further in order to use some of the uh, CPM programs. Uh, there is no standard way to do things a lot of times. In the old CPM programs, you actually had to enter some of your own uh, parameters, like which ports are you using for the serial or parallel, uh, what bits are you using for handshaking and things like that. So that's kind of the, the purpose of this. Um, so let's go ahead, since uh, we can uh, start things at zero now, let's, let's uh, uh, reset and we'll go to address zero. So we know that the serial port is on address 22. So we've done this before. We can say uh, input uh, 333 uh, from uh, 22, which is the um, serial. And then we can do an output. Um, and we can do an output. Let's say we'll, we'll do it to FF. Okay. And jump to zero. Oops. What did I do? We have input 22, output to FF, jump 00. zero. Oh, what am I doing? We're outputting zeros. So let me uh, go over to the terminal uh, and type type a character. I'll type uh, the character A. And there we go. We have an ASCII A. I'll type character 1. And that's an ASCII 1. Um, so that's a way for us to uh, get uh, something and uh, send it somewhere. So let's go uh, a little bit different. Uh, let's do a reset. We're going to input from 2.2, and we're going to output to 2.2. So this is a loopback test. We're going to read and we're going to write. So um, let's see here. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, I'm depositing, and then I'm jumping again. Zero, zero. All right. So now... Um, I'll have to show you on the terminal, but when I type the letter A, um, it's uh, looping uh, around and around and around, and uh, doesn't stop. <laughs> just keeps going. So that's the problem, it doesn't stop. So we'll take a look at, um, I'm going to write the same program that we just did on the front panel, but I'm going to write it in assembler. We'll assemble it, we'll link it, and then we'll run it over there. And then from now on, we can just do things um, instead of toggling on the front panel. And, and uh, sometimes it's handy to have the front panel, but we'll, we'll do it on the screen this time. Okay, let's boot CPM. Okay, we're going to go over to the C drive. We're going to run a program called uh, WS, but it's called it stands for WordStar. WordStar was the quintessential uh, word processor of its day, and it's basically a, a quote-unquote full-screen editor, even though it's basically paragraph by paragraph uh, editor. Um, and uh, it'll ask us to, or I'll ask it. Uh, we need to open a file. We're going to create a file called serial.asm. It says, oh, that's a new file. So it'll create one. And we're editing. So this is a test of the serial port. All right. So I guy 20, oops, 2017. And control G is delete. There we go. Okay. We're going to bin, be, oops. We're going to begin the program at 0, 100. All CPM programs begin at 100. We're going to put in a label. We're going to read from our uh, ports. 
And we're going to jump back to start. Okay, so there's our program. Pretty simple. It's what we did in the front panel. Uh, control KX. Uh, we'll stop this thing. Save the file. Let's take a look at it. Serial.asm. That looks good. Let's assemble it. Okay. And let's take a look at what kind of files we have now. We have the, the ASM that we created. We have, there's a hex now and a PRN. Let's look at the PRN. So this shows how it will be loaded in memory. So at uh, 0, 0100, uh, we should see a DB and then uh, a 22. And then at 0102, we should see a D3 and a 22. And then uh, jump instruction. So everything looks good. And let's look at that hex file. So this is a, uh, a hex loader file or an Intel hex format file, something like that. Always starts with, each line starts with a colon. It tells you where to load it in memory and how big it is and things like that. And then it gives you the hex code to load, so that you can look in that line and find a DB22, D322, C3. So uh, that would allow us to load this into memory if we had a loader, which we do. So we say load serial. Now what it's going to do, instead of loading it in, it's going to create a self-loading file. So it's going to create a .com file, an executable. So now if we look at the... Uh, now we have a .com uh, extension. One of the files is .com. So in CPM, if you just type some letters, it'll think that's a command and it'll go look to see if there's something that's that .com. So there is. So it'll actually execute our little program. If I hit the letter A on the keyboard, B, C, one, two, three. So this is all working good. And it, um, it's going to continue to do this. Now, this is interesting, but what we really need in, in uh, to do uh, real work is that we need a, a program that allows us, when we type A, it types just one character. And when we type B, it types just one character. So we need to handshake with the serial card. And there is a line for that. And it tells us when there's a character available. And when we read it, it'll clear that bit. So there's no more characters available. So um, we need to learn how to do that because w there's no standard in CPM. A lot of the programs require you to tell the program, where is your serial card? Which, which bits do I handshake with? You need to know this information. So let's go a step further. Um, we'll need to take a look at the schematics to figure out where those bits are and then and then go test them and we'll come back here and and ch and change our change our program okay okay i took out the uh, serial card um and uh, uh this is the serial connector up here let me uh pencil a little better this is the serial connector up here and this is the uart chip uh this part of the board is the uh, parallel section, so we'll just be kind of concentrating over here. Um, this is a 1602 UART, and uh, there are a lot of jumpers. So there's jumpers here, there's jumpers here, there's jumpers in here, there's jumpers here, here, and then a bunch of jumpers over here, 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 here. This, this card is full of jumpers, plus there's switches. Um, but uh, for right now, we're going to concentrate on... Uh, this group of jumpers right here and this block of jumpers right here. Uh, so let's zoom in on those. All right. So again, uh, we've got this jumper block here, which is basically the RS-232 pin 2-3 swap. Uh, so 2 and 3, 4 and 5. Um, so we'll see this on the schematic. Uh, this section here is for the output. 
uh, where the um, output of the board goes to the um, RS-232, so the transmit. Um, and uh, down in here is a lot of the receive. Um, so the receive line, uh, the receive ready line, uh, the cassette recorder receive, and stuff like that is, is down in here. All right, so let's take a look at the schematic. This page shows um, the UART chip, uh, which is a, a, a TR-1602. And there's basically four pins that, we're, that we care about. All the addressing and the baud rate and all that stuff is somewhere else, but there's really two pins that we're worried about. Um, uh, transmit and receive, so data in, data out. And then uh, is it receive ready and transmit ready? Um, so two status pins. So really those are the only four pins that we need to worry about and uh, the only thing that we really need to, to uh, jumper in order to go our next step in our, uh, our serial program. So uh, it's hard to get started with this board. It's so complicated. So there is a quite extensive user manual that Intel wrote for, uh, MSI wrote for this board. And they give some examples in the back. So uh, one of the examples is for an Atom terminal at 9600 baud. So this is where I started. I said, oh, okay, they show me what jumpers to put on the board um, to make at least this thing work. So that's what I did. And I didn't really think too much about it and it seemed to work. So um, uh, it, it's a black and white, you know, copy and it, it's hard to tell where those jumpers really are. Um, so, uh, here's a, a zoom in of the, the schematic where those jumper locations are really, uh, sh shown. And I've, I've put in the jumper jumpers in blue here. So the easy one is in the upper right hand corner. That's kind of the pin to switch three swap. So the, the, the two lines at the top are transmit and receive. And then the next two lines are um, RTS and CTS, ready to send and clear to send. So really the, the four the upper four pins are the only things we really worry about. The, the rest of it we're not going to use. So um, pins two, three, four, and five. Um, and um, the uh, directionality, there's there's two pins in and the two pins out. So there, there, there's transmit and transmit ready and receive and receive ready. And so that's what we need to, to worry about. So in the um, upper left section, um, there's a series of jumpers. Uh, one jumper uh, goes from the upper right down, down to the lower um, fourth pin on the left. And that is the the uh, transmit line. So the transmit uh, line comes in from off the page A, and uh, come comes along and gets jumpered over to um, the upper right, and then goes through an inverter uh, that drives the RS-232. So that's how transmit gets out. Um, the other bunch of jumpers there are basically um, tying a bunch of pins low. So the upper left is ground. And so we're going to tie one, two, three, four pins low. And that basically hardwires the RS-232 to always say it's ready. Um, so we're, we're never going to handshake with this uh, setup um, of jumpers. Um, it's just, I'm always ready. I'm always going to transmit. I'm always going to receive. OK, so then the lower right jumper, that one one jumper there, basically routes the receive pin to the receive of the UART. So that's what that one wire does. And then the lower left, those two wires, basically say, okay, we've got two pins left on the, on the UART. That's the transmit ready and the receive ready. And we're going to jumper those over to some bus drivers. And this group of bus drivers uh, there is an input port um, to the MSI. And that, in my particular case, the RS-232 UART is addressed at 22. And this particular port is addressed at 23. So these are status bits. So if we read port 23, um, bit 0 and bit 1 are going to be uh, transmit ready and receive ready. 
So that's where we're going to go from, from here. We're going to uh, use those two status bits um, to know when we can transmit and when, when a, a character is available. And that will get us to the point where we receive just one character, not, not a whole bunch of characters. Uh, the receive pin will say there's a character ready. We'll read it and then that bit will get cleared and we'll only read one character. So um, we need to go back to our program and look at uh, port 23 and read these two bits and do something with them.